Welcome to this special edition of Hannity, Scandals Plaguing the Democrats. I'm Janine Pirro, in tonight for Sean. It's been a terrible week for the left. Senator Al Franken is under fire after this photo was made public by radio host Leanne Tweeden. She's accusing Senator Franken of sexual misconduct, which he's now apologizing for. Then, with your, the Uranium One scandal heating up, Hillary Clinton appears to be getting very nervous about the potential for a special counsel being appointed to investigate that nuclear deal. Clinton is now trying to spin the idea of a special counsel as, quote, authoritarian. And Hillary continues to make excuses for why she lost in 2016. The failed presidential candidate is questioning the legitimacy of President Trump's victory. Plus, the day of reckoning is finally coming for the Clintons. Democratic Senator Kirsten Gillibrand is saying Bill Clinton should have resigned over his affair with Monica Lewinsky. Here's what she told the New York Times. Is it your view that, that, that President Clinton should have stepped down at that time, given the allegations? Yes, that, I think that is the appropriate response. But um, I think things have changed today, and I think... Under those circumstances, there should be a very different reaction. This comes as many on the left and members in the media are finally starting to admit that sexual misconduct allegations against President Bill Clinton were dismissed and downplayed and that Clinton's accusers were widely attacked and discredited. Look at a couple of these headlines. Vox, Bill Clinton should have resigned. What he did to Monica Lewinsky was wrong, and he should have paid the price. From the New York Times, what about Bill? Sexual misconduct debate revives questions about Clinton. And from the Atlantic, Bill Clinton, a reckoning. Feminists saved the 42nd president of the United States in the 1990s. They were on the wrong side of history. Is it finally time to make things right? This is a major change from what we've seen as recently as a 2016 campaign. Look at how the media attacked Clinton's accusers back then. A trio of women who say Bill Clinton made unwanted sexual advances in the 80s and 90s. Mr. Clinton denies it. Two of the cases were plagued by factual discrepancies. When it was Bill Clinton's problem, Almost in the moment, Republicans tried to make it an issue, and it didn't work. So why is it going to work 20 years later with his wife? I just don't see it. And the issue of Bill Clinton's past is, the, is that fair game, and it would be if he were running for president, but he isn't. Hillary Clinton is running for president. The big issue? I, I would like to apologize to those tramps that have slept with my husband. <laughs> Maybe she could have said that. Oh, wait. Joining us now with reaction, our radio talk show host, Tammy Bruce, media reporter for The Hill, Joe Concha, former Clinton pollster, and Fox News contributor, Doug Schoen, and American Conservative Union Chair, Matt Schlapp. All right, uh, I'm going to start with you, Joe, from The Hill. Why the difference? What happened between when Bill Clinton was accused and everyone saying, gee, this is a private matter, let's just let bygones be bygones and these women can't be believed and today uh, judge there's an old saying where if you abandon your principles for convenience they're not your principles they're your costume in other words principles are only principles when they're exercised at times of inconvenience so now when members of the left-leaning media or politicians like uh, Senator Gillibrand speak out about this it rings hollow because the time to speak out was either in the 1990s when President Clinton was in office or during the 2016 campaign when his wife was running and she ran a narrative back in the 90s and even last year dismissing 
his accusers. You had to do it then. To do it now, it means nothing because the Clintons don't mean anything to them anymore. They don't have any more use for them anymore. Okay, so Doug, yep. if if what Joe was saying is correct, and and I think this all started with Donna Brazil. I mean, the the yeah, you know, the Clintons kind of going out of power. I mean, Senator Gillibrand. I mean, does she look ridiculous? I mean, yeah. on the one hand, she says, you know, Hillary Clinton is this great woman who's a supporter of women, and within ten months. She's saying, you know, Bill Clinton really is, you know, he I, shouldn't, he shouldn't I, I have. I think there is a special place in hell for Kirsten Gillibrand. Wow. She was elected with the help of both Clintons. They campaigned, they fundraised, they extended themselves. And now you saw how she jumped at the chance to say Bill Clinton should, for some reason, uh, retrospectively resigned from office. But should he have resigned? Let's start with that question. You know, it was yeah, litigated. Like fully that, fully it, it, you, you, here's the answer. It was fully litigated with a special uh, prosecutor in impeachment. What was litigated was the whole case of uh, what uh, he did inappropriately with Monica Lewinsky. Okay, so his semen was on her dress. He's the president of the United right. States. She's a 20-year-old right. I I intern. Right. So is he was that impeached, not and the an Senate didn't convict. Power? And as far as I'm concerned, it's done. Okay, so because they happened in the past, let's we deal with it. the present, like so, uranium one. Okay, let's deal I'm with. I'm not going there. That's not what I'm talking about. Well, I'm going where the American people it, no, need no, to no. be. You're going where I'm going. I'm hosting uh, this okay. right now. All right. Okay, Matt, go. Yeah. So basically, what's happening is the Clinton legacy was Republicans were just focusing on sex, and it was all just about sex. And Bill Clinton wanted to get to the work of the American people. And what's happened? all these many years later is that alibi that ridiculous answer to fooling around with an intern raping attacking it's not going to cut it the american people are tired of the whitewashing of the clinton scandals which started with this and if bill clinton had been the can you imagine if hillary clinton had won and billary bill clinton was the first gentleman we'd be going through this all first of over all, again he's not a gentleman okay well, yeah i say it with quotation not, okay. marks okay so tammy now i'm going to go to you so yes, let's talk about yes, the fact please. had bill clinton been made accountable for what he did and and w there is yeah. uncontroverted evidence that and you want to talk about an abuse of power there is nothing more uh disparate than the president of the united states and a 20 year old intern in the oval office and his semen on her dress that had that been dealt with appropriately and not alleged to be a private matter between bill and hillary instead there would have been yeah. thousands of women who would not have been affected in the workplace had we then dealt with it as a country as opposed to what 30 years later well but we also heard stories prior to his election about his behavior now we know with the weinstein situation kevin spacey etc that there are patterns to predators in fact the lewinsky situation may have been the one consensual dynamic in his history yeah. of predation so so this is you know we're talking about you know, Juanita Broderick, Kathleen Willey, Paula Jones, but leading up to the presidency, during the presidency, and of course, who knows what after. But what this is really about, Judge, is the fact that the Democrats, they're, they're this dangerous now. They don't care that they facilitated this in the 90s. All they want to do now is try to remake history so that they can pretend to be moral, our moral uh, betters, our moral superiors again, so they can lecture us on the Republicans who are doing it. They don't care about oh, the issue. They do not care about women. I they want Al Franken their out of the base. Senate. What and, he did was and, wrong. I'll let you talk. Uh, Doug, I did, not, I did not interrupt you, Doug. The bottom line here is, is that this is a complete meltdown. And the fact that they're so, and it's not just Gillibrand. It's pretty much everyone throwing uh, Clinton under the bus when, in fact, what are we going to have next? Uh, a committee de determining whether or not Ted Kennedy should be censured because he left a woman to die at the bottom of a lake. Oh, God. The Democrats have been. <laughs> treating women like crap for decades and this is a reckoning and it's important for every part of the establishment where powerful men prey on women that okay. they think are beneath them I, I just and wanted, it's a time to I, end I that. I want to follow up on one thing Tammy but the Democrats are supposedly the party uh, that support women. Where's Nancy Pelosi on all this? Where's was Kirsten Gillibrand who was fighting for women and, yeah. you know, making sure that women had an appropriate place to go in the military if they were sexually assaulted? Is she a hypocrite? Yeah. Is she a user? Well, what look, is Kirsten Gillibrand this is where I, all this, of this? Is, this is where I agree with Doug. 
is that the fact that she is in that seat because of the help of the Clintons, right. we've all known his behavior. I, as a feminist at the time, condemned now and all the all the uh, feminists who were supporting him and enabling him, including his wife, who remains an enabler and women like Gillibrand. This is the point. So opportunistic, so craven that they don't even care whatever they can do to get more power or to keep their seat. Doug is absolutely right. But this is where we've got to stand together in a unified framework to condemn that and realize, though, why they're doing it. All they see it is as the political opportunity. And, and at the same, this, of course, is an existential issue. Oh, and okay. I think that their silence is part of enabling okay. this dynamic. All right. Uh, Doug, I, I'm going to let you go. Sure. Hit it. A simple point. Anybody, to Tammy's point, Democrat who are Republican, who is engaging in this kind of harassment, should go. We have evidence from Franken. He's acknowledged it. Sarah Sanders is right. Touching the woman's breasts when she was asleep is abhorrent. The apology isn't enough. It should happen. He should go. Period. What does that mean? He who should gets leave. Him to go? I, I think he should resign. He should resign. Tammy's exactly right. How do we get him to resign? You Invite know. Invite him well. to. Well, go ahead. I, I know the media will not help in that regard. Yesterday during Sarah Huckabee Sanders' press briefing, this is right after Al Franken news broke, number one topic on Twitter. Everybody's talking about it. Let me break down for you the transcript of the press briefing. 15 questions on Roy Moore. How many questions on Al Franken? One. How many on Robert Menendez? One. What do those politicians have in common? They're both sitting senators, and they got two questions combined while Roy Moore got 15 from the White House press corps. Yeah, me, That's not me, just bias. On this. Crazy. But let me jump on this Bob Menendez situation, which is, yes, he had a mistrial, but that trial wasn't even looking at many of these sexual allegations, which an ethics committee investigation will look at with Bob Menendez these tawdry accounts of what happened when he w when he went on these trips. Well, well that's bribery corruption. I want no, to no, 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 no. There's also no, sexual no, 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 harassment allegations. It's underage with prostitutes. The, yes. right. yeah. These okay. are issues that, look, everything with a president or senators, we can all talk about the law, and the laws is important. But in the end, it's also politics. And there's something going on in this country where the American people think the country's on the wrong track. They think there's too many crooks in Washington, D.C. They're tired of Congress, and they're tired of the runaround, and they're not seeing their lives improve and they're not going to take this crap from their elected officials any longer. I've seen a big change. So when the Democrats are saying Gillibrand right now saying I want, uh, you know, the Clintons gone, this isn't just about Donna Brazil and the rest of them saying let's get rid of the, uh, the Clintons. This is about them saying everybody saying let's clean this all up. But what I don't understand. They've been covered, the media has covered for too many Democrats for too long. Republicans don't get covered. That's the one difference. Democrats get covered by their left-wing friends in the media and I think on these topics that's over but but you know what when Gillibrand I, then I says add? I'm gonna ask you this Tammy when Gillibrand then says you know mm. she tried to clarify by saying by today's standards this is terrible you know not by yesterday's standard as if a rape 30 years ago wasn't as bad as it is today <laughs> when uh, an, an imbalance uh, in power wasn't as bad as it is today that's just stupid. Uh, I don't, I don't it's know an excuse well what what planet She's been living on because there were a, a lot of people who were outraged with what was going on with Bill Clinton. This is for her. It's a situational ethics, right? For her, it's in the moment with what a, a, appeals to her. She's a she's a liberal in this day and age. If you're a liberal and a Democrat in this day and age, something is wrong with you. The bottom hey, line I'm is, I'm a liberal and a Democrat. To, I think I'm okay. And you think she should be gone? I, 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 I think politically, what she said was abhorrent. I don't think she should. Resign, but I hope what her constituents. Of course, she's a hypocrite. I said that. Special place in hell. I think we investigate people with regard, without regard to party. Doing we it. get rid of no, no, anybody suddenly, who's an abuser. Period. She's, she's being honest, and the Doug, fact is, suddenly, more Democrats are going to do what Gillibrand did. Why is she honest? Because she's she, well, suddenly, she's, she's doing honest. it. Hold on, she's doing it for political reasons. I buy that, and that in her party, they're having a big divorce with Clinton Incorporated, which I think is lovely. No, but what's going to what happen? What they're doing is. 
paving the way for the next Democrat, and she's looking to make sure that she's in power exactly. with the next one. She's Judge, a user. you're exactly right. She is a user. But, but I like the Democrats turning Correct. on Clintons and it's, saying that the you know the it's not just it's the Republicans were right. would turn on Clinton and use the Justice Department the way it's supposed to be that's used. That's a new topic. However, I was trying to, I was I trying to say that. That's a new topic. Final Judge, word, Judge. Joe. I don't Judge. think there are any special it, places in hell, right? I mean, it's, but there are like special pretty, pretty prosecutors dark, right? on Uranium One. That's what we should be focusing on because that's today's yeah. news and that's what matters. May, may I, will. Tam, I let hope me, so. let me just up, let me say one, one, one thing is that they say it's about uh, bipartisanship, no matter who's doing it. Only when they lose control of the narrative. The fact is, by throwing Clinton under the bus, they mean to try to have it only be about Republicans. Like, look what we did. We got rid of that one, and they want control back. That's not going to happen. Okay. This is about Democrats and the hypocrisy of, of saying I that they represent Doug, that they leave. represent every woman in this country, and they do me, not it anymore. Right. It's been a fraud for decades. Oh, the feminist you. movement and the Democratic Party have been a fraud for decades, and now people know. To me, it's right and wrong. Huh? Right and wrong. Anybody who abuses, regardless of party, should go. Matt is right. Let's clean out the entire process. We could have more senators, new senators, than we've ever had in our history if the standard is that this kind of behavior is not accepted. And Amen. And Let's have Joe it happen. Punch in the Hill, last word. Two Sexual seconds. harassment is not a partisan issue. No one has a moral high ground anymore. And you know what the shame exactly. of it is? It but, has been a partisan so, issue, and yes. parties have covered for themselves. And the Democrats and are supposed to be the owners. Thank Thank you. They're not. A lot of energy here Good. tonight. Coming <laughs> up, you. we're going to have more on Senator Al Franken being accused of sexual misconduct. And later, the wall seemed to be closing in on Hillary Clinton. How sad. We'll explain why the controversies surrounding her aren't going away anytime soon as this special edition of Hannity by Janine continues. Welcome back to this special edition of Hannity. Earlier today, Leanne Tweeden, the radio host who accused Senator Al Franken of sexually harassing her back in 2006, appeared on The View where she described how the Democratic senator forcibly kissed her while they were on the same USO tour. Take a look at this. He just sort of comes at me and he puts his hand behind my head and he comes in and it happens so fast. You know, he, he just comes in and he mashes his mouth against my mouth and sticks his tongue in my mouth and i was so shocked because of course i was not expecting that at all mm -hmm. right i'm i'm thinking that was the last thing i was expecting and i i pushed it, him away from me and i'm like if you ever do that to me again you know mm -hmm. what are you doing Tweeden also shared a note she received from Senator Franken apologizing for that incident as well as for taking this photo which shows Franken groping Leanne as she slept during that same USO tour. Take a look at this. It's on letterhead from Alice. It says, Dear Leanne, I want to apologize to you personally. I don't know what was in my head when I took that picture, but that doesn't matter. There's no excuse, and I understand why you could feel violated by that photo. I remember that rehearsal differently, but what's important is that the impact it had on you, and you felt violated by my actions, and for that I apologize. I have tremendous respect for your work for the USO, and I am ashamed that my actions ruined that experience for you. I am so sorry. Sincerely, Al Franken. After this disturbing story surfaced yesterday, senators on both sides of the aisle call for an ethics investigation into Senator Franken. Joining us now with a reaction is Fox News correspondent at large, Geraldo Rivera, and Fox News <laughs> contributor and CRTV.com host, Deneen Borelli. All right, guys, uh, I'll start with you, Deneen. Uh, what should happen to Al Franken? Well, listen, he got caught red-handed. Thank goodness for photographic evidence, right? Uh, I think he should step down. And listen, when you look at the two sides of the spectrum here, it, Republicans, Democrats, the media will be screaming and calling for a person to step down if they were Republican. You had the Democrats who were saying it should be investigated. So clearly, if the man had any morals, any common sense, I think he should step down. All right, Geraldo? I just don't uh, buy that. I think that what infuses this entire epidemic of sex harassment claims is a deep sense of political partisanship. The Republicans are appalled when the Democrats do it. The Democrats are appalled when the Republicans do it. I think that there is really no moral high ground. 
the the rules have changed and until people get used to the new normal there are a lot of people like senator franken who are and perhaps judge roy moore who are going to go down because they haven't caught up with the new rules i think that between now and thanksgiving all the rehab centers in the country are going to be filled with the people doing their mea culpas uh, judge I, I think that what we see what we're seeing now is a hinge in history okay. we're seeing people coming to grips with what has been a problem for a long time. You know, Geraldo, what I said um, in the earlier segment was this. Had we dealt with Bill Clinton, had the Democratic Party, and not so much because it's the Democratic Party, but it was the party that supposedly stands up for women. Had they done what they should have done, so many women would not have been subjected to what happened because, you know, they. this was a man who did something that could have been proven because there was this differential in terms of power between the intern situation that was proven. Now, when we've got Al Franken now saying, I don't know what was in my head when I took the picture, he really wasn't apologizing for grabbing her and kissing her. He's apologizing for taking the picture, which was proof positive of his groping her breasts. I mean, what kind of apology is that? It's not. <laughs> well, I, I think that Franken is in deep, deep doo-doo right now. I, he was my favorite candidate to be the Democrat, to represent the Democrats in 2020 uh, against uh, President Trump in the presidential really? election. Now his career is toast. His career is absolutely over. Now he, he may, and it's really up to him and his family and, and the Senate Ethics Committee, whether he can survive out his term. But his national aspirations are gone. He is being punished my goodness, in, in a way that is uh, as profoundly unsettling to a person as you could possibly imagine. I, I don't know what Leanne, why she held this information for as long as she did, but I think that also indicates how things have changed. Franken did this picture the same year President Trump had this infamous conversation with Billy Bush for Access Hollywood. That was only 2006. And yet Words the world is an entirely action, different Geraldo. place today. Words versus actions. And listen, this ethics committee, that's week two, because we're just finding out this week that there's a slush fund to pay off women, hush money, who have been sexually harassed by members of Congress. We're just finding out about this. Anywhere from 15 to $17 million has, been, has already been paid out. This fund was established. I think 15 years ago, Judge Janine. That right. is absolutely outrageous. It's a club. And there's two sets of books, two sets of rules. We can't do anything you know, like this. You know, Janine, what's so interesting about this is you're right. We just find out about it. 235 judgments, sexual harassment, yeah. members of Congress, House and Senate, Geraldo, uh, where $15 million between 15 and 17, uh, if what you say is accurate, where we, the taxpayers, Pay We're for the sexual for harassment right. judgments. But, Geraldo, I want to go back. I want to talk about this ethics investigation. What sanction can an ethics investigation, what power do they have? Look, and who conducts the investigation? It's the old boys club. Who are we kidding? Oh, oh, I, I agree that it, there is a toothless aspect to it unless they can prove a crime. But you can't for a minute minimize how disruptive this is in the life of Senator Franken. He victimized this young disrupted? lady 11 years ago. Are now you now they now they, they now you've got to pay covering up for each other, Geraldo, and I don't mean to interrupt you. But, but it's you, not disruptive. You, what kind of comment is that? You don't you don't for you don't for a second. What? Go. Ne neither of you for a second pretends that that huge slush fund has been used only to pay off the victims of Democrats, do you? No, what about no, Senator Vitter? What about Senator Craig? What about Congressman no, Mark no, no, Foley? No. All on, Republicans. Geraldo. We're not talking politics now. We're talking about men who abuse women. Then we have to be equally outraged we are. That's regardless a given. of what party I don't they care represent. What their party is, Geraldo. Right. I spent my life prosecuting men who abuse women. I spent my life going after injustice, whether it was age and youth and money and poverty or strong against the weak. That's the problem. And Congress is just let the me epitome and okay. the iceberg. 
God bless you for that. But let me just let me just say, isn't it interesting that when Roy Moore got in a jam, all the Democrats pounced. Moore. Then then Al Franken got in a jam oh. and all the Republicans are pouncing. That to me is evidence that there's more at work here, that, that hypocrisy is still ruling rather than morality. Geraldo, there's I, photographic evidence. What more do you need? OK, I don't care. Here, here's what I care about. Will it change, Deneen? It's one big club, just like I said. And but don't you think the American people are going to see it? Right. And they're going to say, we don't care what, power, what party you're in. And I think that, and you know what? Yeah. The Democrats, if they are true to what they're saying now, if they're not just trying to deep six the, Democrat, uh, the Clintons, if they say, we're going to stand up for women, and if the Republicans say, we're going to stand up for women, then you know what? Maybe there is a day of reckoning for everyone who abused the, you know, the weaker. Well, up until now, they only stand up for women when they need their votes. Last word, Geraldo. I think that there is going to be a really a period of extreme turmoil and and people's lives being uprooted as more and more memories are refreshed by all of this, as more and more victims and purported victims are emboldened by by the wave that's obviously hit us on this. You don't know where this stops. This thing in ours oh, yeah. is. is is really no one is guiding where this scandal goes right now. It's not Republicans aren't in control of it. Democrats aren't in control. You have no idea how many. Me you know, I remember in Washington where the, they used to wait for the seasonal interns to come for the new crop. The new crop, there was a, it was a, a well-known secret the, the, that Foley and others were preying on the interns. I, wait until all of them now remember and are encouraged and Hello. emboldened to come forward. You have no idea where this is going to end up. I, and and no one what? is in control of this. That's and, what makes and, it so fascinating. And the operative word there, secret. It was an open secret, whether it's Harvey Weinstein in, in Hollywood or what's going True. on in Washington right. or what's going on in whatever world it is. It's time for those open secrets to stop being so secret. And Deneen Borelli, Geraldo Rivera, thanks for being with us. Coming up, thanks, Hillary Jeff. Clinton seems to be getting nervous about the scandal surrounding her. We'll explain why she should be as this special edition of Hannity continues. Welcome, welcome back to this special edition of Hannity. Scandals plaguing the Democrats for months. This program has been shining a light on one particularly damning scandal involving the Clintons and the very sketchy sale of Uranium One. Last night, The Hill's John Solomon released a brand new report detailing that. Now, even Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein is seeking access to an informant who helped the FBI investigate a bribery case surrounding that Russian state energy comp uh, company. But Hillary Clinton wants you to think this scandal, it's much to do about nothing. Take a look at this. The Uranium One story has been debunked countless times uh, by members of the press, by independent experts. Uh, it is nothing but a, a, you know, a false charge that uh, the Trump administration is uh, trying to drum up. This is such an abuse of power, and it goes right at the rule of law. If they send a signal that we're going to be like some dictatorship, some authoritarian regime, where political opponents are going to be unfairly, uh, fraudulently investigated, uh, that rips at the fabric of the uh, contract we have that we can trust our justice system. In a radio interview early today, Hillary Clinton reiterated those comments and even called the Uranium One scandal a, quote, political stunt. Joining us now with reaction is the author of Clinton Cash from the Government Accountability Institute, Peter Schweitzer. Good evening, Peter. You know, when hey, Judge, great to see you. Good to see you as well. When your book first came out in 2015, you know, did, did you ever wonder why in 2015 there wasn't an automatic investigation, uh, you know, by Congress, uh, by the FBI, by the Justice Department? And, and because 
Peter, when I read that book, you, we covered it here. I covered it on Justice. I mean, it was explosive. Your facts were uncontroverted. And yet Hillary Clinton says, you know, it was a false charge. It, it was, you know, it, it was uh, controverted by, you know, press reports. I mean, what was, the, what is she talking about? Yeah, it's, it's certainly not the way that I recall it. Um, look, uh, you know, the book came out in April of 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, the Uranium One story we shared before the book came public with the investigative unit at the New York Times. They ran a 4,000 word front page piece confirming the findings, the hidden donations, the, the, the CFIUS approval, the Clinton's connections to this drama. And really after the book came out, Judge, the FBI did launch an investigation uh, and they felt there was enough compelling evidence. This has been widely reported in the Wall Street Journal and, and other places. They felt there was enough evidence to uh, get the Department of Justice to grant them subpoena powers and they were turned down by the Obama the Justice Department. So, you know, her argument that this has been debunked, it hasn't been debunked. All the debunkers do, Judge, is they change the timeline or they exclude facts and they say the fact pattern doesn't work because they've excluded certain facts. And what I've said from the beginning, you and I have talked about it, yeah. you're a seasoned prosecutor, is look, you just need to investigate and find out what happened, and then you can figure out what crimes, if any, have been committed. And that's all we're calling for. You know, Peter, I, I have to commend you because, but for you, we wouldn't know about this. And, you know, um, on, on my show, Justice, one of the things that I did was I talked about the fact that uranium is an essential ingredient for Molly 99, which the law in this country requires that, you know, we make in this country that we are are now shipping uranium out to other countries and then paying for it. It's an essential ingredient for nuclear medicine, for medical isotopes. It now makes sense to me that, you know, the Russians were in such a, a, a rush to buy it. But what do you think is going to happen? If this witness who was gagged and now Diane Feinstein wants to hear from this FBI informant and is now ungagged, what do you think we're going to hear from him? Well, I have to say up front, I have not met him. I don't know him. Uh, but what I understand by looking at legal documents involved in his case, this guy was an insider's insider. Right. Uh, he was being paid by the Russian company $50,000 a month to serve as a lobbyist. And in the legal filings, what you find is his job was to basically carry the flag for this entity in Washington, D.C. And that job included setting up meetings with high-ranking administration officials. This would have been the Obama administration, people on Capitol Hill, and other elite influence uh, uh, you know, makers. Um, so he was working at a very, very high level. And what has leaked out um, seems to indicate he's got a lot of information information that relates specifically to Uranium One. So it's going to be very exciting. And I think it's important to point out, Judge, also, remember, we already have a foreign government official saying that involving Uranium One, that, that, that he and his fellow uh, government employees were extorted by the Clintons, then Senator Hillary Clinton. Uh, this comes from the Kazakh uh, head of their atomic agency, saying that Senator Clinton refused to meet with Kazakh officials unless and until until they granted uranium concessions to Frank Justra, who ended up giving you know, more than $100 million to the Clinton Foundation. So we've got that testimony. We've got this new witness coming out. It's going to get very interesting here in the weeks ahead. Peter, were you ever afraid for your life as you were investigating this, as you, as you were writing the book? Well, I'll, I'll just say this, Judge, in general terms, um, you know, we do take uh, and have taken security precautions. Um, we do face a, in our organization um, cyber challenges on a regular basis. Um, you know, this is important stuff, and I think the more public it is, uh, the better it is for everybody who's investigating it, whether that's the informant or whether that's other journalists who are pursuing this story. Do you think that ultimately there will be justice in this case? 
You know, look, I think there should be, and I think right now, I think we take this step by step, and I remember you and I sat down in New York and had lunch, and you taught, walked me through the, the process of prosecution. It's a step by step. First thing we need to do is gather all the information. Without having one subpoena, without having looked at any of Hillary's emails, while not yeah. looking at any personal communications, we already have the transference of money, that money being hidden, not uh, publicized by the Clintons that they received this money at the time the deal was being approved. And we have uh, a, a witness, this foreign senior government official, and we now have this other informant. That's a lot of evidence without one subpoena, without any investigatory powers being well, used. So well, you know, let's gather all the do. information and find out what happened. All right, Peter, thanks so much. And joining us now thanks, with Judge. more is investigative reporter Sarah Carter and Fox News contributor Charles Hurt. All right, guys. Uh, and, and as Sarah uh, uh, Carter, of course, you have done incredible work on this. Uh, kudos to you as well. And, and I, I'm going to start with you. Uh, is there any new information, anything that you know about the informant that, that we can tell the audience about tonight? Uh, absolutely, Judge Janine. What I can say right now is that we're going to be breaking a story next week um, that will show with multiple documents as well as other uh, sourcing mm -hmm. that they were very well aware, Vadim Mirkarin and all the others that were under investigation by the FBI of Uranium One and had direct knowledge of Uranium One. You know, the Justice Department has tried to kind of distance itself from that. We saw that Attorney General Sessions made that statement. Well, you know, this case was criminal. It didn't have anything to do with Uranium One. What I can tell you now is that we will show evidence that it did have a lot to do with Uranium One. What they chose to look at was on the criminal side. What they did not reveal was the Uranium One side. Whoa. And this is next week. Correct. All right. Charles, what is your take on this? Well, you know, it's really amazing to listen to that clip that you played earlier of Hillary Clinton talking about how she's being pursued and how unfair it is and how... Uh, <laughs> you, you, you she's know, good, these, isn't she? She is. It's amazing. Truly amazing. Especially when you compare that to the fact that what we do know happened in the middle of the last election, which is you had the Obama administration deploying the most advanced, sophisticated...